welcome back welcome back um, appreciate it appreciate the likes appreciate the subscribes just wanted to go over what i did this time so i was kind of uh let's say tired of the haptics that came with the alp between the issues with the firmware the actual way that they wired them up uh, the actual haptics that they use everything was inferior and i wanted to change it up to get better feel but not also go the full expensive solenoid route which we all know that can add up quickly um so what did i do i kind of went the uh i guess the poor man's doff way is what they're saying um the two dayton exciters on either side of the flippers and then what I also did was add a base shaker. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I wired them up, how I installed them, how I drilled the hole for the Vibs back glass switch, and also how I set up surround sound with a receiver with an output, dual output from the PC. So let's talk about some of the components I'm going with. Got uh, two Dayton Audio BST-1s. I'm probably only going to use one. These things are pretty powerful for what I'm hearing. I'll save this one for something else. Uh, I also got a Kinter MAI-70 two-channel amplifier, which is going to handle what's currently not here, but the DAEX-25 Dayton exciters. I have those already inside the machine. We're running this amplifier to them. Um, I also picked up a Fozzy Audio amplifier for specifically for the Dayton's. Has the power output for two of them, although I'll only be using one. Um, and then let's talk about the wiring. I'm going to be pulling my signal directly from where the exciters were, uh, the wiring for the exciters. So I'll be using this. There you go, it's 3.5 millimeter two pin wire this in then I'll be able to split that off with these two to these amplifiers one uses traditional RCA and the other one uses aux in but should be fun and also got some banana clip connectors for the back of this makes things super simple and clean so I'm not going to go over the whole how to disassemble the uh, control panel thing again but get to this point and uh, find the original wire that goes to the exciters, either on the control panel, the arcade control panel, or the original uh, deck that they supply you with. There will be a wire that goes, or leads, to the exciters. Uh, the stock exciters are wired in series, completely different from how I'm going to wire them moving forward, but you can see the Dayton's in the position where I placed them to see that one on the right there but he's down there right below the flipper same thing on the left side that's what you want all right so let's go over the wiring again this is mocked up i have this down so i don't mess with the glass not that it's going to get scratched or anything or tempered but i just hate that sound of metal scratching against glass but uh let's get into the details here the wire that comes up that leads to your original haptics, the uh, exciters, whether you have the arcade control panel or the regular control panel. Again, this is the wire I spliced into. Now what I did was I originally had a Y connector and this didn't work. Uh, I, I found out why. It's obviously just a different type of end. It needs a single, not a double end, but uh, not to worry, not to fret, because what I ended up doing was splitting it right at the connection between the two. So you have two inputs, one and two. So the amplifiers are getting input from the original exciter wire. Okay. So I turned up the volume and now I can adjust this, which adjusts the exciters. As you can hear, they're already starting to rumble. And then this knob will turn on which we're going to mount underneath the ALP but as you can see everything functions now that everything's been pulled off I'll show you what I did on the inside to get power to the amplifiers ran a small power brick and it's got I think four connections on there and I need only two for the amplifiers that I have 
So that's gonna run through there. The wire runs out the back of the ALP, which I'll notch the back cover to allow for the wire to pass through and plug into a surge protector. I have the Dayton exciters wired up, one and two. And then again, that wire that you wanted that fed the original exciters is here. I have split that into two 3.5 millimeter connectors. And that's what's feeding the amplifiers the signal that they need to output to the base shaker and the exciters. So now that I got everything wrapped up, I figured I'd show you the end result. So I'll have to isolate the wires that lead to the exciters because the wires themselves can vibrate against these components, plastic, whatever it may be, and also create a buzzing sound. So you wanna isolate those, but here's what I pretty much did. First, I ran a hole for the vib switch. It goes right alongside the regular switch. A little hard to see, but I'll show you from the bottom. Finally installed that. Secondary, I drilled another little hole here, which will give me an access point for all the wiring. Um, the amplifiers were mounted underneath the unit so that allows for easier access and also volume adjustments from the front and the side. My side's going to be for the exciters. My forward is going to be for the base shaker. And a quick view under the unit. I mounted the base shaker about halfway underneath. It seemed to give me the best results. And the amplifiers, one on the side, one in front. Put the hole leading there. And right there you can see my vids. Back glass switch. So I ended up using a drill stepped it up a few times and I uh, get yourself one of these you will drill it out perfectly to install that switch including the micro switch so once you have that installed you want to go in and tweak your sound settings I'm doing it on the table level right now just to kind of get a good understanding where I need to be but I think I found the numbers that I like and I prefer for the feel that I prefer when playing the table so here's what I have set it's currently at Master volumes at 50, FX is at 40, and music volumes at 10. Reason for that is a lot of the music volume gets pumped through the exciters and the bass shaker. Um, bad on that games for designing it that way, but if you set it up this way, you actually get a lot of feel through the exciters and through the bass shaker, and still hear the music playing in the background, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so my volume's at, I believe, 88 right now. Let's double check it. 91, 88, yes, I was correct. And I can show you the feedback. You see that? You remember what I told you about isolating this wire? If it's touching anything, it'll vibrate and create a buzzing noise as well. See how much movement? Just from the music, and that's set at 10. But the bass shaker and the exciters are finally doing their job. It um, feels nice and solid, nice good impact to both the sides and I guess the bottom. You could feel the bottom through the machine as well. It's awesome so far. Let me get it wrapped up. So now let's get a good idea of what it sounds like. A Start. spooky adventure begins. Getting too scary. Now the rumbling can be felt on the sides and also underneath. Definitely an improvement over the original. And also works in FX3. Another cool thing that I did was I added a surround sound system as you can see by the bar up top. I have the receiver down there temporarily subwoofer there's a couple more speakers hidden around up in the back there but you're able to split the output on your pc to accommodate both the hdmi that's going to the alp and 
separate audio source, which is the receiver. So how do we set up the multiple outputs? Scroll down to your desktop at the bottom, taskbar, right click on speaker, go to sounds. Let me drag this down here. There we go. I'm gonna go to playback. You wanna set your speakers or your, I guess your receiver output will show up here as your default device. So you right click it, set it as default if it's not there. Then what you wanna do is go to recording, ensure that stereo mix is visible. If it is not, if it is not right click and check off show disabled devices. Once you have that, I'm gonna go to properties, listen, check off listen to this device. And then you wanna select playback through this device. You wanna pick the Lantium, which is the ALP. Once you have that, you wanna click apply. Okay, you might have to restart. You might not. But once you have that set up, you can have the audio being sent out to two different sources. So I'm able to use the haptics and also have the 5.1 surround sound of coming out of the receiver. All right, it's gonna be a little hard to show you with one hand, but I'm getting the feedback through Zachariah, through the Gottlieb, and right, through FX3. Hey, that's wasting. Come on, you hear the bass acre. That's good feel. Oh, didn't catch that one, but definitely improvement. Another good example is during the menu select, you can actually hear the bass being vibrated through the ALP. And most importantly, we got it to work with APX. Yes, I uh, installed Pinna Popper, a steep learning curve to get to understand how. Uh, Pinna Popper works, how to load the VPX tables, future pinball tables, but, and pup packs, but it's an interesting, uh, very, very interesting to learn. Um, definitely advise if you got the time. Look at the uh, readily available YouTube videos, the websites, a lot of good information. But back to what we were talking about, the feedback is awesome. Um, force feedback from the haptics and the base shaker definitely makes a difference in VPX. Again, this is the poor man's DOF setup. There are better setups than this, uh, but thus far, I'm loving it. A nice, good, solid thunk, and the bass is nice. Again, hard hard to play with one hand here, but uh, you get the point. Dave, man, open up. Dave? Yeah, Dave. Dave's not here. Oh, man. Dave, man, open up. Dave, man, open up. Dave, man, open One hand the bandit. So another little tidbit of information that I found while I was doing some diagnostics as to why I wasn't getting haptics through OTG. Uh, you wanna ensure that you go into a Gottlieb table on the ALP, one of the tables that was preloaded. Yes, any settings that you do on the ALP do transfer over to OTG, unfortunately, specifically the volume. But you wanna go into a Gottlieb table and uh, you want to turn up the haptics. In most cases, they were set to lower off. I set mine to high, and as soon as I did that, I exited out, and Future Pinball, VPX, and FX3 all had haptics all of a sudden. So, again, another wonky thing by at games, but dude, that's the work workaround. <laughs> That's it, guys. Again, I thank you for the likes and subscribes. I hope this is helpful and beneficial to you. If you want to run the same system that I got, it cost me roughly, I think, $230. I will try to include links for everything that I utilized. 
in the description. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe.